Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination. Visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From recipes, motivational posts, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and the reader's favorite regular weekly posts, this and that, which goes live on the blog every Friday. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 298th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. And bon ami, we made it to 2021. And I am very excited to talk with you today about what we are going to dive into. It is all about a fundamental component of living well, of living simply luxuriously, of creating a life of deep, true contentment. And it's one that danced into my head a little bit here and there. And I kept saying, well, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. I've been talking about this all this last 10 years. What? But then I realized it's actually a really good idea to refresh, to revisit. And because we change, our lives change, the world changes as we know in this last year. So why not reassess? What am, what am I talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about 27 ways to simplify your entire life. But before I dive into the entire list, what is this week's petit plaisir? What is the first petit plaisir of this new year? Well, it's a French series, television series. And for me, I'm thoroughly enjoying it for all sorts of reasons. And if you are a Francophile, if you are a cozy mystery lover, if you are a traveler, you, I think, are going to love this series. And I'm excited to introduce it to you at the end of today's show. So go ahead and stay tuned for that. But let's get into the 27 ways to simplify your entire life. I want to begin with a quote that I came across in reading one of the books that prompted today's episode. This comes from Hans Hoffman, and it states, the ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak, end quote. You have likely heard this quote before, but I thought it encapsulates perfectly what we're talking about today because simplifying is far different from minimizing. Simplifying requires that we consciously explore what is of value in our lives and then thoughtfully edit in order for what we deem most important to shine as fully as possible. Take, for example, eyesight. As someone who wears contacts in order to see clearly objects in far distances, when I put on a dirty lens or my lens happens to have an eyelash or a spot of makeup on it, not only does that lens hurt, but frustratingly, my eyesight is impaired. And my only attention is to figure out how to either get that lens off or to clean it because it hurts and I can't do anything else. Understandably, my main goal is to see clearly Nothing else really matters in that moment. And I want to be able to see well so that I can go through my day peacefully, that I can make decisions, you know, that align with my life and not be distracted by a fundamental need, which is eyesight. And I also want to proceed safely through life. So that's a survival technique or a survival need. And so this gift that is 2020 eyesight, however we acquire it with eyeglasses, um, contacts, um, if we're so fortunate to have those options, is to put what simplifying is all about into more clear perspective. Such a truth comes into play with our everyday routines, our homes, and our overall lifestyles. If we don't clear the clutter, 
literal and figurative. In other words, we don't clean the lens, the quality of our lives decreases. What we love, what we value cannot grow, can't shine, can't fully blossom. Whatever the analogy is that speaks to you, full growth, the full maturation of something can't possibly be experienced multitasking our lives, not only when it comes to the tasks we do each day, has become an approach to living how we live in both the early 21st century and as part of the late 20th century. And it was applauded, as we all know. In many ways, 2020 has forced us to recognize how much we missed in doing this. We missed our relationships going deep. We missed simple pleasures because we weren't present in the moment. We were planning. We were dreaming. We were looking to the future. We were worried about the past, hoping it would repeat itself. We missed the gift of appreciating well-made seasonal food. And now we have restaurants that are gone. We missed the gift of truly connecting with other people in a variety of environments. Now that so much of what we thought we valued but did not prioritize, now that it has been forcibly taken out of our lives, are we questioning whether we lived in accordance to what we swore was true to living well? Let's talk about clutter. What is defined as clutter for you may be different from what someone else may define or label as clutter. My kitchen, for example, has many tools that are handy surrounding my stovetop in the canisters, pots hanging right in front of the stovetop, salt and spices within arm's length. Now, for someone else, such a sight may be exhausting to the eye and look terribly cluttered when viewing my kitchen. However, organizing my kitchen in such a way makes my cooking fluid more enjoyable and simple. But that may not be the case for everyone else. More figuratively speaking, how much time with our own and only company we need will depend upon not only our temperaments, but as well where we are along our life's journey. There are times in my life where I have needed far more time alone than others, and I am thankful I finally was able to find that time as I needed to figure some things out, things I didn't even know what they were to sort through (laughs) until I began to sort through my life and my thoughts. However, once we learn the direction we want to travel, the skills we want to improve or learn, we may reduce the time we need alone. But I would argue, as you will see in today's list, we will always need regular alone time, or as it is often described, solitude. Since the inception of the Simply Luxurious Life blog, simplicity has been a fundamental component of living simply luxuriously. In order to choose well, in order to wisely invest, we first need to know what is of value to each of us. And the only way to do that is to simplify our lives. Now, I've included some links because, as I mentioned, this has been talked about since the beginning of the blog, which was 10 years ago. This podcast began 2014, so that's six years ago. We've been talking about it for a long time. So I've included a link to all the different posts on all different sorts of topics as well. If you haven't already checked out my first or second book, we talk about specifically these components in a variety of areas in our lives um, in various sections of the books. Now, every year there are certain books I revisit or at different times in my life where I'm trying to make a decision about things or I want to make some changes. And one of the topics that I tend to revisit is simplicity. And so I was reading recently Carl Phillips's book, 22 Ways to Simpler Living, which was released in 2013. And I was also kind of perusing through some other simplifying books to help me assess how simplified I have kept my life. And if there were any spots that I need to check in on and adjust or make improvements. And so what came out of that exploration was this idea of making a list to serve as a refresher for simplification of our lives. I have a feeling each of you have simplified your lives in one way or another at one point or if not multiple times throughout your lives. So today's episode is more of a check-in so to speak. It's an opportunity to ensure that you and I are each truly living a simple life for ourselves so we can then live truly, simply, luxuriously and find true contentment in our everydays. So let's take a look at this list. Number one, leave space in your day. 
yes, this is going to have to be an intentional decision because schedules may have to change. So less work time, get more efficient and productive work time leads to more fulfillment in your lifetime. And isn't that ultimately what we're trying to do? Live a lifetime that we love and that we're proud of and, and that we are able to savor and be present as we live it. Everyone's going to make their own unique tweaks on this. And I think working from home has allowed us, if that is what your job is right now, it's return to the house, given you an opportunity to see what makes life better, what's missing, and to hopefully piece together a better puzzle of life as you move forward when working from home shifts back to the office or back to a new way of working at the office. So that's number one, leave space in your day. Number two, absorb the truth that less is often more. Now, as we go through the rest of this list today, I think it's going to become apparent as to how to do that. But I think number one kind of started it off, leave space in your day. So less work, but better work. So that idea of less is more and really thinking that through. If you're giving more time to sleeping a full eight hours every night, then you're going to be better in the day when you're awake and you're connecting and you're making decisions. So it might seem like, oh no, I'm taking hours away from my work day. Not really if that work isn't highly productive or efficient. So everyone's um, approach or how they look at their life will be able to see where they could take away more, but actually gain more as a result, which seems, um, you know, counterintuitive, but actually is paradoxically a truth. All right. That's number two, absorb the truth that less is often more. Number three, limit the time you spend in or with your inbox. Now, This is something that I dread when I go to school and look at my emails because I really put a clear boundary on my schoolwork. I don't check it on weekends and I don't check it during holidays. And I make that very clear up front at the beginning of the school year um, to parents and students and and, um, administration also has um, the obligation to respect that as well. It's front end loading. That's important. But then when it comes to your inbox itself, when you have all sorts of mail coming in. I recently did this with my business email is to create rules and it depend on the email system you have. There is something that'll be similar to rules. Every system seems to have it, but in my system, I currently have, they call them rules and you simply write, well, if this has this content, it should automatically go to trash. I shouldn't even have to see it. Now you may be thinking, oh, but that's junk mail. Yeah, but you probably still get some things that come in Every time you look at them, you're like, I don't want to read that. So set a rule that catches all those ones that get through the cracks. Or if you automatically file certain things and don't need to look at them, maybe something that says invoice or something that says receipt, you know you've done it. It automatically goes to this one particular file that says receipts 2021. You can go and look at it. It's still there, but you don't have to see it cluttering cluttering your inbox. Same thing, streamline your folders, go through and in earnest, look at the folders you actually need, put them in subfolders, things where it just doesn't look so overwhelming when you take a look at your inbox and then rearrange your view of your inbox so that you can easily see what you have and not have to open so many windows to get to where you want to go. And if you go to system preferences or in mailbox preferences, you can often figure out how to either arrange by column or arrange on top of each other the views of the emails that you're clicking on or just highlighting. It, there's so many ways to make it more viewably pleasing to the eye and better access, more quicker access to your information. But again, just something to maybe do at the start of the year. That's number three. Limit the time you spend in or with your inbox. Number four, have a courageous conversation about the truth behind the statement, I don't have time, or for example, I'm too busy. This one can be so powerful if we choose to be courageous. Instead of leading others to believe you want to say yes, when it is clear another priority supersedes the opportunity that they are presenting, let them get to know you. And if you don't like 
this prioritization of your life that requires you, at least you feel it requires you to say, no, I'm too busy or no, I don't have time. Then use that as a red flag to tell yourself to have an honest conversation with yourself and make the necessary changes so you can do and you do have time to do what you want to say yes to, but right now cannot. So number four is have a courageous conversation with yourself about the truth behind the statement, I don't have time. Number five, understand what self-full is and refrain from seeing honoring your journey as selfish because it's not. I love this phrase self-full. My counselor actually said this to me during one of our sessions and I appreciated it because we talk about it frequently on this show and on the blog, but choosing you is not selfish. If you are not healthy, if you are not rested, you are not going to think clearly. You're not going to make good decisions. You're not going to connect in a healthy, civil, loving manner. You need to prioritize yourself. But most importantly, know that being selfful is not the same as being selfish. Um, It's about being aware of who you are and what you need and knowing that you have a gift that you want to share and there's a certain amount of energy and time that you need to protect to make that possible. That's number five. Understand what self-full means. Number six, stop trying to keep up with life and start living your one and only life. We're going to get to um, a number later on in today's list about just being fully aware of the societal pressures that we succumb to unconsciously. Perhaps this past year has given us the opportunity to really be with ourselves and our thoughts and our awareness of what's truly important. And even if it hasn't, because we've been dealing with the stresses that this year has brought us, becoming aware of this chasing our tail behavior so that we can be accepted, so that we can be applauded, so that we won't feel left out. It's detrimental in so many ways. And while that's a whole nother podcast episode, I think the key here is how do you feel living your life right now? How does it feel? And if you feel content, keep doing it. Keep investing. Something's working very well and you probably know exactly what that something or some things are. But if you don't enjoy living your life right now, you can change it. You might have to to reach out a hand to ask for some help. Often, It's just simply understanding what we need. And that takes time, but we need to be able to figure out what that is in order to step forward in the right direction. So that's number six. Stop trying to keep up with life and start living your one and only life. Number seven, be honest about what you allow into your life as a distraction from living fully. And what I mean by living fully is what are you doing that prevents you from being vulnerable, from being truly loving toward yourself and others, from being truly content in your every days, from feeling an undercurrent of calm in your life, with, which keeps you grounded and at peace with life's unknowns, which reduces the worry. What are you doing that distracts from that? This is where the honesty has to come in. Are you keeping yourself so busy, so have such a full schedule so that you don't have to be honest about something? And it doesn't have to be this dark, heavy thing. Just honest about what it is that would be so nice if you could just experience it or invest in it. Take a risk to try it. It doesn't mean it's going to work out immediately, but it will definitely improve when you eventually start giving energy to it. So that's number seven. Be honest about what you allow into your life as a distraction from living fully. Eight, live a life that doesn't exhaust you, rather a life that energizes you. So six, seven, and eight have kind of all tied together here. But again, this is about how do you feel? And I think some of us felt relief when the world seemed to slow down in the spring. And we were like, okay, I'm rested. Let's now, and then we had to go back into lockdown and we got frustrated. But I think because we gained some clarity and we were excited to get out there and live better. But then the world said, no, you haven't learned the lesson yet. (laughs) Or I want to make sure you have learned the lesson. I want to make sure you have learned the lesson. And however you interpret what we're going through, 
I think the important thing is to examine for yourself how you feel, how you felt during, how you felt before. What did you do during this time of 2020 that did feel better, that forcibly made you change? And you're like, oh, wow, that kind of worked. This didn't, but this did. Every one of us will find different answers. Listen to those answers. This is where your curiosity will guide you. So that's number eight. Live a life that doesn't exhaust you, rather a life that energizes you. And on that point, this, the thing that could exhaust you might energize me and vice versa. Do things that energize you. Keep the hobbies and passions as part of your life. Don't let those go. And sp- on that note, number nine, give permission to yourself for your hobbies and passions to be priorities in your life. Carl Phillips talks about this in his book as well. And from my perspective, it is within your hobbies and priorities that we are honoring our gifts and fueling our spirits so that we might share our unique gifts with the world, either directly as we emanate joy because we're doing something that brings us such fulfillment or simply affecting the larger world in a way we may not understand fully. Some of us may do something more directly that helps the larger world, but even if we just affect our immediate people around us and ourselves, that's reason enough to keep our, pri- our passions and our hobbies in our lives and prioritize them. So that's number nine. Number 10, keep good health of body and mind. Again, speaking of priorities, when we focus on our health, mental and physical, so many other things will improve as well. That's number 10. Number 11, stop the hurry. If you find yourself hurrying, assess and edit. Carl Phillips suggests asking yourself these two questions. Number one, is what I am hurrying about for important to me or the approval of someone or something else? And number two, is the hurrying getting me closer to my goals? In other words, why are you doing it? What's motivating you to do it? It needs to be part of your priority list, not society's, not someone else's in your life. And it needs to be something that propels you forward. And even if you are hurrying towards something you love doing, why are you hurrying? If it's so important, buffer it. Don't rush through it, to it, or from it. Buffer it with your schedule. Give time on either side. So that's number 11. Number 12, check your email less frequently, but more regularly. And this goes along with number three, set boundaries on your attention and time. You will reduce worry. You will communicate clearly and you will set expectations which do not overwhelm your life and will not increase your stress. In many ways, you will reduce not only the stress in your life, by viewing your email less frequently, but more regularly. But the stress of those trying to communicate you, that will be reduced as well because there is a clear expectation of when they will hear from you. So again, clear communication is going to help there. And that is the front end loading that will create that clear communication. And just follow through. If you say you're going to check your email once a day during the work week, check it once a day during the work week. If you're saying check it three times a day, you know, so on and so forth. So just clear communication and follow through. Number 13, I love this one. Bookend your days with walks. Long or short, go outside, take in the fresh air as it will clear your mind and help in ways you may not expect. Even if you think it cannot, as it brings you to the present, it will actually. I know that sometimes I'll get myself thinking about an idea, thinking about this and rush, and then I put the leash on the dogs and put on my shoes and I step outside and the wind hits my face and the sunshine warms me up. And I am more present and a lot of my thoughts just go away. Yes, I do think when I go walking, of course, sometimes the best ideas come while I'm walking, but that's the whole point. You get out of your own way. By walking, we can get out of our own way. So that's number 13. Number 14, find time to meditate daily. Now, meditation can be done in so many different ways. And sometimes meditation and praying are mentioned as alternatives to each other. However, I would argue they actually are separate things because they do separate things and they require separate actions. Meditation is an observance of our thoughts. It is a stepping away from our thoughts. It's not stopping thinking and it's letting them, our thoughts, be without 
our engagement with them. We that's the stepping away. And so I want to focus on meditation today with number 14. Meditation is not a conversation. It is an observation, a practice of exercising the mind so that we are the master of it, not the other way around. It's a way to calm down. It's a way to let go. It's a way to find peace and get out of our own way. It is a muscle, as Andy Pettycomb describes it, that we exercise. And the more we do it regularly, even just five minutes a day, can help us find the calm throughout our day, our entire day, no matter what happens. So it really is a muscle of how to observe our minds when it does start to worry, when it does start to, you know, go to one extreme or another. And we can, we're aware of that. We can observe that as an outsider, so to speak, and say, okay, let's breathe. Let's respond rather than react. So number 14 is find time to meditate daily. And it will help the rest of the day, the entire rest of the day, help you to make better decisions, help you to stay more even keeled, No matter what happens, which we do not have control over, no matter what happens, we can be calm. We can be. All right. So that is the first half of our list of 28 ways to simplify our entire lives. I have a short sponsor I want to introduce you to, and I'll be right back with the rest of today's list. Today's episode is sponsored by Bombas. Bombas have literally rethought every little detail of the sock we wear to make them way more comfortable. I enjoy wearing them every single day. My ankle socks are my go-tos because they do not wear out, they stay on my foot, and they come in fantastic colors. But these socks do more than just keep our feet cozy. They help give back to the most vulnerable members of our community. Because for every pair of socks you purchase, Bombas donates a pair to someone in need. The generosity of Bombas customers has allowed them to donate over 40 million pairs of socks and counting through their nationwide network of 3,000 plus giving partners. And the impact is more powerful than ever. To those experiencing homelessness, these socks represent the dignity of putting on clean clothes, a small comfort that is especially important right now. As a simple, sophisticated listener, give a pair when you buy a pair and get 20% off your first purchase at bombas.com slash sophisticate. That's bombas.com slash sophisticate for 20% off your first purchase. Bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash sophisticate. Welcome back. Let's get into the final 14 ways to simplify your entire life. Number 15, play and do it regularly. (laughs) For me, gardening has become my favorite act of play during these past 10 or nine months. And in the winter months, when I'm sowing seeds in my potting area indoors, that too is playtime for me. I'm playing in the dirt. I mean, come on, it's so much fun. (laughs) Also diving into creative projects or playing with my dogs, whether it's fetch or chase or anything that brings a bounce to their steps, that is playing. And we need to do that regularly. How wonderful of a requirement for living simply is that. Number 16, rest and be still. Active rest or deliberate rest, as shared in detail in episode 139 of this podcast, is similar to what we just talked about in number 15, playing regularly. Because playing lets the mind go and it doesn't constrict it or limit it to where it does go. Often that's sometimes where you know, the best ideas come from. We think of things we never would have thought of before because we're just letting it go free. But for number 16, resting and being still... I'm talking about literal rest, a nap, not having plans and just being, taking a getaway where you aren't a tourist, but rather a traveler or a lounger. This is a must in our lives if we want to rejuvenate. And this is not to say that you're so exhausted through your life that you're taking these even and especially because we don't want to be exhausted in our lives as we've talked about earlier, but it's often to get away from feeling you have to do what might be right in front of you saying, oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? It's a way of letting your brain and your being and your body just rest. 
and to do it regularly. In some ways, it's it's simple every day naps. In other ways, the getaway, it's it's you know it's going to be once a year or or whatnot. Um, but rest and be still, and don't apologize, and don't feel bad about it. Number seventeen: teach others how to treat you by modeling. When you respect your own time by protecting it without apology regarding when you are available and you don't bend like Gumby to work with their schedule, you are modeling this. It is when you do say yes that those who observe your practice because they have maybe seen or heard you say no to previous invitations or so on, that they are more likely to respect showing up on time or as planned. Now, that may not be with everybody, but for the most part, this is how you model. This is how you say, this is me respecting myself. And just simply do it in a very kind and honest, but not questioning way. Don't end with a, an up note with your voice. Instead, end with a declarative tone. It's amazing how powerful our tone can be. It can be gentle, but also resolute. And that is really what we want to practice. Not only will you be thankful that you did it for yourself, but you're going to start to build healthy relationships as well. Number 18 is understand what tension is and when it is helpful and when it is hurtful. So good tension is when you are growing, you are learning something new, you are stretching yourself by making change or changing because you need to change to meet your goals. That's tension that's in your life. That's good tension to feel. Don't Don't feel, you may feel uncomfortable, but keep going. This is a good tension if you want to grow. Bad tension is when you won't allow yourself to be who you are. Instead, you're trying to fit into someone else's or society's box of what they want you to be. That is bad tension. So become aware of why you're feeling the tension and that'll let you know whether to change the pursuit or what you're doing or to keep striving forward. That's number 18. Number 19, turn away from the outside regularly to gain grounding. Now, when I say outside, I don't mean mother nature. I mean society. I mean other people's opinions. I mean media. Do this regularly. It might be something as simple as one of my readers recently shared. She doesn't check her Instagram or her social media for the first two hours of the day. Studies have shown after she read a research paper that doing this actually reduces the stress of the day and elevates the quality of that entire day because you've had two hours that were were not intruded upon by the outside world and were able to think clearly about what you wanted to do for the day and set the tone yourself. So it could be something like that where it's just a portion of your day every single day or it might be, depending on your life and your job, an entire day or entire weekend, whatever it might be, just remind yourself to step away from the outside world to get your bearings, to make sure you're going in the direction, doing what you want to truly be doing, and that it's in alignment with your priorities. Number 20, savor regular small pleasures, also known as, you guessed it, petite plaisirs. Ah, oh, Yep. You all know about these. We do them very well here on this show. (laughs) Those little things that either cost very little or nothing at all, but we revel in them. They keep us present and they make us enjoy that everyday moment even more. That's number 19. I've written about these on various posts and episodes for all sorts of inspiration ideas, and I'll be sure to provide a link to a handful of them um, on the show notes. Number 21, donate or sell all the extra and unnecessary tools you have in your house for either exercise or cooking or technology. You get the idea. (laughs) If you know the true mechanisms of good cooking, if you know the true way to have effective and lifelong lasting fitness, and if you know the true mechanisms of how a tech device works best, you will find nine times out of 10, that it's not more tools that are better, but fewer and better ones that are necessary. So dive in, learn and eliminate (laughs) or reduce at least. That's 21. So that one does literally reduce clutter, but it will also reduce your stress because things will function properly for a long time. Number 22, reduce your overhead. I like this one. Austin Cleon's book that I read last January inspired this um, observation. How to reduce your overhead is key to living a more simplified and peace-filled life. And 
The key thing here is you ask yourself, what does it cost to run your life? Whether in your business or in your personal life, what is needed for a life of contentment? Most likely to return us to number one at the top of our list, less is needed for a more fulfilling life. The few things you do need simply need to be quality, both in make and design, as well as thoughtful selection to fit well with what you know about yourself. So go through your bills, go through your subscriptions, your regular payments, examine how you actually use, or if you actually use it at all, what you pay for. When you reduce the overhead, so the cost, you clear space, which gives you more choice and therefore more freedom and peace. You don't have to make more, you simply need to live below your means. So if you have less expenses, you don't have to have such high means. We know this truth unconsciously, but we also need to live it. And so this time of year is a great way. And I did this during the last week of the year, during the between the years, I just went through all my bills and I just looked at all of my subscriptions and I just was really honest about, okay, do I use this? Do I read this? Do I like this? And it was very helpful to making a better decision for my expenses moving forward. So that's number 22, reduce your overhead. 23, keep what works well and eliminate the mediocre. When it comes to skincare, for example, clothing, tools, and other items, be honest. Invest in the best you can afford and let go of the rest. Quality over quantity, put this into daily practice. Number 24, regular solitude. I won't go into a deep depth in today's episode because I did an entire episode on the power of solitude. That's episode 91. There are all sorts of benefits, highly recommend it, but it's absolutely imperative to living a simply luxurious life. So episode 91, The Power of Solitude, be sure to check it out if you haven't already listened. Number 25, streamline incoming information sources. Edit the podcast you subscribe to so you can find the ones you really want to listen to each time there's a new one published. Be honest about the news that is informative and helpful and inspiring. Similarly, the blogs and online sources, if you have signed up for their newsletters, do you read it when it arrives or does it immediately get deleted or passed over? What television programs and streaming services do you actually watch? Do an information edit and you might be surprised as I was when I went through all the podcasts that I had subscribed to. I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't listened to that show for two years. Some of them haven't been around for two years because they're done. But even so, some of them still were around and I just wasn't listening anymore. They were great shows. They just didn't serve a need in my life at this time. So I went through and really edited them so that the ones that I do love every single time there's a new episode, they are there, easy to find, and I can quickly get to them. That's the simplifying part. You're making it easier for yourself to enjoy what you love, what brings you pleasure, what brings you contentment, what brings you calm. So that's number 25, streamline incoming information sources. Number 26, identify false needs. The Simplicable blog aptly defines a false need as, quote, a theory that societies create to keep a population in a state of toil, distraction, and complacency. False needs are typically abstractions that are built on top of real human needs and sold with media and groupthink, end quote. Examples of false needs, attaining a certain social status, acquiring certain material items, as small as a certain pair of glasses, to something as large as a house. Competition and the need to beat someone in order to feel what you have gained is of value. Recognition or rewards. These are all false needs. The key thing here, the key thing here is to understand that understanding what the false needs are that you've accepted as true, it's not easy to figure these out. It, it, it requires each of us to be excruciatingly honest about what we actually need. Now, I've been thinking about this for myself quite a while lately, and I've come to discover some very liberating ahas. Some of them have to do with teaching, and the other ones have to do with how I go about my daily life. And, and I've started to make some changes, and I will, will be making more changes in the, this future, this, this new year, and I'm excited about them. And it's one of those things where we go, oh my gosh, I did accept that as something that was valuable to me. But then I look more closely, it's like, that actually isn't going to bring me joy, or it didn't bring me joy if we reflect on things that we thought would bring us joy. So I've linked their article on what false needs are, because they dive deep into all of those different examples, if you want to check that out. But I think it's very important 
to really dive into that one. That will actually help with so many of the other items on today's list and discerning what is of true value for your life. That's number 26. Number 27, celebrate rather than compete with others regarding life's journey. And this ties in a little bit with what we just talked about, false needs with regards to competition. A secure individual, someone who is secure in their life journey, comfortable with the uncertainties of life, confident that they will be able to handle what comes their way because they trust themselves, they instinctively celebrate others rather than compete with them. Sometimes they may even be inspired by those they meet, but they're never jealous because they are secure within themselves. And that's a journey to get to. You don't just, you aren't just born and are secure within yourself. This is a journey. This is a process. Some people go more quickly to it. Some will have a longer journey to it based on different life experiences. But for all of us, it's possible. So celebrate rather than compete. That's number 27. And last but not least, 28 is figure out what causes you stress and thereby grabs your focus, time, and energy. Be honest and then get serious about making permanent changes. As this new year rolls around, sometimes money and weight can creep to the top of resolution lists if we're making them as things we want to change or improve. However, Looking more closely, what are we doing in our lives that cause these two areas to be filled with stress? Sometimes it is what we are not doing. We're not removing self-deflating influences. We're not diving into what brings us joy and buoys our love of life. We are buying our way to a happy life when the contentment we seek is actually within, something we can't buy. So much can be avoided by simply going deeper within ourselves, being honest with ourselves and making simple, small changes, whether additions or subtractions to eliminate such stresses on either these two areas or others that may be causing us pain. I want to end on this one because I'm in the middle of reading a book that, and I was listening to a podcast on this recently too, for an upcoming episode, that's going to talk more about how in fact the stresses of our lives are causing so much unhealthiness, um, unhappiness, uh, discontent, and we have more control over it than we realize. So start the homework today, and I have done this too. What is it that's causing me stress? And how can I front end load that? How can I be preventative so that I don't end up here all the time at this place going, oh, I wish I could, or I wish I was. How do we not even get there? And that might take time to figure out, or it might be really easy. But look for a new episode coming up in the next, um, this month or potentially February, depends on how long it takes me to pull it all together on stresses and true contentment. So that's number 28. Figure out what causes you stress, thereby grabs your focus, time, and energy. Simplifying, as shown in today's list, is not as simple as rearranging our furniture or editing our closets. If we choose to truly simplify, we need to be fully present and absolutely honest with ourselves. Sometimes we may want to seek out the guidance of a counselor to answer these questions because we can't get to them on our own. But in most cases, we can largely do the work ourselves. We just need to remember to do the work because it does pay off wonderful dividends that will remain in our lives for a lifetime. Clearing the clutter, brightening our view, freshening the air to welcome the beauty that our lives have the potential to reveal to us. Yep, simplifying our lives is most definitely worth it. Now for all of the links that were mentioned for different podcasts in the past um, posts and whatnot, visit the show notes to simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 298. And I've actually gathered up specific posts on simplicity um, and shared those directly right there on the show notes that I thought you might be interested that would further the conversation on various points. So be sure to check those out. Now I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. This week's Petit Plaisir is a French television series that debuted in 2012. There are five seasons and it's called Blood on the Vine. I thoroughly have enjoyed this show. Yes, it's a murder mystery, but it's a cozy murder mystery. Think Agatha Christie or Poirot, um, Miss Marple. Um, Not as funny ha-ha as Agatha Raisin, but definitely in that vein because the settings of each 
episode and the episodes are about an hour, hour and a half long. So you're getting basically a movie take you to different parts of France. He, the main character, Benjamin Lapel, is a internationally renowned wine expert and he publishes a, a yearly guide that is greatly anticipated um, by all those in the wine industry. And he's often called upon to assess the value of different vineyards. And so that's what takes him to these beautiful vineyards. And they are actual vineyards in France. When he's in the Champagne region one time, he's in the Loire Valley one time, he's in Bordeaux for one episode. So you see all these beautiful regions. And um, his uh, assistants as well. Um, I get a lot of different style inspiration from the the female characters. And um, it's just a lot of fun. And the the subtitles are very easy to read. They're not small, which is nice. They're not super large, but they're definitely very easy to read. And they don't distract from watching the film. So if you're looking for subtitles, they definitely have those and they're well done. This is adapted from a crime collection that was published by Fayard. And it's also just reminded me how I need to get back on the horse when it comes to improving my French or learning French for that matter. I know I'm not perfect at French. I'm French. I'm so far from even good at it. Um, as some reviews have blatantly told me, I know I'm not professing that I know how to speak French. I just said I like the French culture and the French language. I'm trying to learn. But I, I pick up different things as I'm listening and watching these episodes um, like, oh, I didn't think about how to say it that way. Or, oh, I know what he's saying. I don't have to watch it this whole time. I can just listen to it while I'm in the kitchen cooking, things like that. So check out Blood on the Fine. It's on MHZ Choice, which is mainly a French streaming service um, that I subscribe to. It's, I think, about $6 a month. And it has many other French shows, comedies and dramas as well. And they even have other um, international series. I think I saw Borchen on it as well. Um, but you can get it through Amazon Prime or directly go to MHZ Choice website and subscribe there. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. I want to thank you for tuning in to the first episode of the new year and look for a new episode on Monday, January 18th. So we're going to do every other Monday, every week where I do not have a new podcast episode. You can stop by the blog for a Monday motivational post that's brand new to keep you inspired as you kick off a new week. Until then, bonjour and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.